Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's go through how we can create synthetic data. Because in many companies, you might be having data, but in some cases, you don't have enough data. Or so in some cases, you have the data, real data, but you cannot use those data due to privacy reasons. So you need to create some synthetic data. How this video will proceed is first, I will explain you uh, what is synthetic data and how you can create the synthetic data and what are some of the use cases and then we will go through the code implementation using Langchain and OpenAI models. First thing first, what is synthetic data? As name already saw this, synthetic meaning that it's not the real data. We have some real data. We will use that in order to create the synthetic data. That's how it works and how it is done, right? Before how we actually create the synthetic data was that we have some statistical models and we used to use the deep learning models, GAN and VAEs, generative adversarial networks and variational autoencoders and so on. And we, use, we used to use the mix of classical statistical models and deep learning. I said we used to, but still many companies mainly rely on these kind of scenarios in order to create the synthetic data. But then what happens now this generative AI comes in and yeah, that is the talk of the town. Everybody wants to use the LLMs to do their, to do their things, right? So that's the reason I'm going to show you how to create the synthetic data using generative models. And the main thing is here, okay, we create the data, but then, okay, what is the use case of that, right? You might be thinking, okay, I create the data, but what is the use case of that? Here are some of the things, the privacy and security is the main thing because whatever you talk about LLMs, people are saying, okay, why should I upload data to some places? Is my data secure? What is the privacy reasons and so on? So there is already a business model being created by many companies just saying that, okay, your data is private. We don't use your data to train the model and so on. Privacy and security is the main thing. The next is data augmentation, meaning that you have some real data and you can combine that with synthetic data and use that to train your machine learning models and flexibility create specific or rare scenarios right and then uh, cost effective it might be often cheaper than real old uh, data collection and regulatory compliance as i said before and the model robustness rapid prototyping controlled experimentations and access to data these are some of the use cases but there are many use cases apart from these also but now i hope you get high level idea why we need that but before going through the actual code implementation part I, I want to show you one diagram that i have drawn here to give how it is done right this approach is called train synthetic and test real there are many approaches that you can take but just to show you what we are going to do i just draw this simple diagram just to show you how it is done right what is happening here is here we have our our data is here what we do is from here, we take some samples out of it. So we said maybe X rows randomly, right? And then what we do is then we pass this data into the pre-existing LLMs so that the LLMs knows the schema and all the different things of the data. And then it creates the synthetic data. And now we have the synthetic data, right? This is what I will be showing you in this particular video, how to create the synthetic data. But in normal scenarios, how you implement this is then now you have your synthetic data. You use this to train your machine learning model, right? And I said before about the data augmentation, what you could even do here is instead of just using the synthetic data, you can already combine this with the real data and then train your machine learning models. There are different approaches that you can take, but this is just one of the example. And when you train with this synthetic data, what you can do is now from your, your data, real data, you have some holdout set, meaning that you have some validation and test data sets. You use this in order to validate the model if it is producing good result or not, or if the model is capable of producing good output or not. Okay, once uh, you do some trial and errors, now you are happy, okay this model is great, then you use that model into your drown stream task. So that is how the normal scenario works, how you train the model using the synthetic data. As I said before also, this is one approach of how you can do. There are many other approaches also, 
but training is the same approach like you have some data you pass that into models models can be whatever you want to use and then you validate you test it and once that is ready you deploy that into the production for your downstream tasks i hope this is clear now now let's go back to our page okay i need to cancel this and quick start so i'm just showing you simple example about the medical billing records because in medical field data is privacy is the main concern and by the way i'm taking this example from lang chain documentation so you can just go there and see what they are doing and more advanced things also are explained in the documentation first thing first we need to set up the environment we need to install some of the packages that we need this is what you can run the shell and then you need to get the OpenAI API keys because we are using the OpenAI model. Go to this link, create account if you don't have already and get the API keys. It will cost some amount, so it's not free. Once this is done, what you can do is then import some of the necessary modules from LangChain. I'm importing some of the things from here. Once the setup part is done, what we can do now is define your data model, right? Every data set has a structure or a schema, right? So how we do it is from Pydentic. As I showed you before, so Pydentic is the data validation library. So you can use that in order to create the schema. So here I'm doing the same thing. So this is the class medical billing and I'm saying here, okay, these are the uh, columns I want to create and these are the types of that particular thing. So now we create the schema so that the medical billing class below sorts as our schema for the uh, synthetic data, right? After that, what we can do is we have to have the sample data, as I said you before, real data. But in this case, we are just uh, creating some fictional records here. So here there is the examples. There is example and patient ID, patient name, and diagnosis code, procedure code, and all the different things. These kind of things are sensitive information, so it cannot be shared. We are just creating some sample data, fictional data points here. Once we create this, the generator does not magically know, okay, how to create the data, right? As I showed you before also in the diagram, we have a model, but the model does not know to create the data unless and until we guide it to do things, right? We do this by creating a prompt template. How to create the prompt template? These are some of the things I took from the official language and documentation as I showed you before also. We are using the open AI template. And then we are creating the prompt template and few short prompt template is being used here. So inside this, you can provide, okay, prefix examples, which we just uh, provided here. And there are some of the suffix. We need to provide some of the information into this particular few short prompt template in order to create some, uh, some synthetic data, right? Why few short prompt template? Because with the few short prompt template, what we can do is we can provide less data let's say that i'm just providing here how many data points as you can see here i'm providing three data points so few short prompt template can be used or let's say that we can provide few data points and create synthetic data out of it with the help of this few short prompt template there are many other templates also you can go and explore more into it once this is done what we can do now is creating the data generator now we need to pass the all the things that we or i just explained you into the uh, data generator so it can generate the data out of it right so how to create that with the schema and the prompt ready the next step is to create the data generator right so here we are using the create open ai data generator and i'm passing the medical billing schema that i just created and i'm passing the large language model in this case as i said you i'm using chat open ai and the temperature is one you can play around with this and then the prompt is thus the prompt template I just created here, right? This is how you can create the synthetic data generator. Once the synthetic data generator is being created, yeah, we can generate the synthetic data. That's why we create the uh, synthetic data generator, right? So yeah, this all one line of code. Now we can say here that, okay, synthetic data generator dot generate and we just pass the subject medical billing and the extra we just passing the name must be chosen at random make it something you wouldn't normally choose right and then run stain meaning that i want to create 10 samples out of it you can provide whatever number you want to create from here so this is how we just provide the informations into this generate and then it 
generates the synthetic data out of it. So yeah, after this, it generates 10 samples. So the list is being generated from the synthetic data. And then we visualize the synthetic data. As you can see here, there are 10. That's the reason I pass here 10. As you can see, it is generating the 10 synthetic data sets. And yeah, this is the example here. As you can see here, it looks similar, right? So we have the patient name, something here, diagnosis code and all the different things, which is mimicking what we provided before. You need to remember the cost part also because each time you are invoking the API and the API call costs some amount. So that is the cost factor also associated with it. So yeah, once that is done, okay, we created synthetic data. That's done. But then how to deal with this? Now, how to combine this with with your previous data or how to use this data in order to train your machine learning models. What we can do now is convert the synthetic data into the pandas data frame. So what I'm doing here is just writing some random code here. What it is doing is taking this synthetic data and converting that into the pandas data frame. So once I run this, as you can see here, it is the pandas data frame now being created from the list. And this is what it looks like. Now you can start using the pandas data frame syntaxes and so on. So you can start exploring based on your use cases. I hope you learned something new how to create the synthetic data. This is one of the use cases that many companies can utilize because not all the companies have good data or if you have good data also, there might be some policies uh, or privacy issues where you cannot use the customer data. So what you can do is just create some sample data which mimics that particular um, data and then create the synthetic data using the large language models and then train the machine learning model to do your downstream task. Okay, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.